Welcome everyone uh, to this webinar. I'm really delighted to have uh, Father James Martin, Jim Martin, um, as our uh, guest uh, this evening to talk about his new book, uh, Learning to Pray. Now, um, I think given the subject matter for uh, this evening, uh, I'd like to ask Jim if he could um, start us all off with a, with a short prayer. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Let's just begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Loving God, we thank you for bringing us together today. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit in our lives. As we think about ways to encounter you in prayer, give us a spirit of openness and trust. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. But my first question uh, for you, Jim, um, is what happened yesterday at the inauguration ceremony of President Biden. Now we saw the invocation prayer read or said by one of your fellow Jesuits, Father Leo Donovan, and there were other prayers. But I wanted to ask you what you thought that inauguration ceremony said about the power of prayer uh, today. Well, first of all, it's great to be with you. It's good to see you, Chris, uh, my friend. I remember that time in Rome. Uh, and I'm really happy to be with all of you tonight um, or today, wherever you are, um, through the generosity of the tablet and through your generosity, too. Yesterday was an exciting day for Americans and maybe for people across the world. Uh, you know, I saw a lot of healing and, you know, um, uh, desire for unity expressed by um, President Biden. But Chris, as you said, uh, the, the ceremony started off with prayer by Father Leo O'Donovan a Jesuit priest and former uh, president of Georgetown University. And, uh, you know, in addition to starting the, the, the um, ceremony with prayer and ending it with a benediction, which is very in keeping with, um, you know, American tradition, you know, we're a very sort of religious country. I thought that Biden himself, President Biden himself, sprinkled his talk with a lot of Catholic references. He mentioned St. Augustine. So the whole, and, and the common good. So frankly, the whole day, uh, beginning with him going to mass at St. Matthew's Cathedral, was kind of suffused with spirituality. This is this is who Joe Biden is. Uh, he is a, a a devout Catholic. People disagree with him on different things, abortion, for example, but it's an important part of his life, and you you cannot separate uh, his faith from from who he is. And so I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the next four years. And the in your book, you talk about how you can encounter prayer in different ways, um, how it doesn't have to be totally formalized and mm -hmm. how there are lots of, sometimes there are, there are shoulds that are, or should not, so that, that are actually can, can actually stop prayer. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because even if you are not a religious person, you watched that inauguration ceremony, for example, or you're not a, you're not a religious person at all, your book and your, what you argue is that prayer is in a sense a way of God trying to meet a person in different ways. So can you just talk a little bit about how, how that works and what, what you what you explain in your book? Sure, and uh, before I forget, here's the book uh, so everybody can see it, it's very pretty. Um, the idea uh, is that, right, as you say, Chris, uh, prayer is a way for us to encounter God and for God to encounter us. And what I, what I mean by uh, shoulds, or uh, my first spiritual director called it shoulding all over yourself, S-H-O-U-L-D-I-N-G, um, was to assume that there was only one way to pray. So for example, if you watch the inauguration, you would say, oh, the only way I can pray is to pray the way that Father Leo did with these, you know, rather elegant prayers addressed to God. That's one way to pray, using rote prayers, using prayers that are more formal. But in the book, I talk about lots of different techniques that people use, Ignatian contemplation, Lexio Divina, which is sacred reading, centering prayer, rote prayers, of course, um, nature prayer. There's lots of ways that you can interact with God and you can encounter God in prayer. And I, I think one of the things that really trips people up is when they try one form of prayer and they find that they don't like it. Uh, or nothing, quote unquote, happens, they give up because someone says, for example, well, you should love the rosary. Now, I love the rosary, but not everybody does. And that's not the way of prayer for everybody. So that's what I mean by the shoulds. Um, your, your relationship with God, um, you know, can be very different uh, than, you, than your relationship with God can be very different than someone else's relationship with God, especially in prayer. You know, I mean, to put it simply, some people don't like, for example, Ignatian contemplation. They don't like the rosary. They don't like this. They don't like that. And that's okay. They cotton to other kinds of prayer, which is fine. 
So is it okay to pray as you, uh, as you walk? Can you go for a, a long walk and pray at the same time? Is that okay? Yeah, of course, the old Jesuit joke of um, the Jesuit novice who goes to his uh, novice director and says, may I smoke while I pray? And the novice <laughs> director says, no, absolutely not. You can't smoke while you pray. And the next guy goes in and says, may I pray while I smoke? He says, oh, of course you can do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Some people find walking distracting. Other people find that it frees them up. Uh, uh, one of my spiritual directees said it makes them less self-conscious about the prayer and it, it can kind of make them feel a little more relaxed. Absolutely. Um, if that's the way you encounter God, um, that's terrific. I think that the challenge for someone who is doing something like that is, not getting distracted. Uh, I was on retreat a few years ago and my retreat director said, I want you to walk into town and just contemplate God and just the things around you. And, you know, I ended up going into a drugstore and looking at magazines. It's just, it was too distracting for me. I need to be in my room and with my eyes closed, but for some it's fine. It's a lovely way of encountering God. Can I ask you about your own um, prayer discipline? Um, we know that Pope Francis is someone, Jesuit yourself, who wakes up very early in the morning and prays for a long time. Is that what you do? Do you pray very early in the morning or um, do you spend lots of time in silent prayer? Could you give us a little sense of what, of what you do? Yeah, and it's funny because I'm in my room where I pray uh, here in New York City. Uh, basically, I get up early and one of the ways I like to pray is I like to use the scripture readings for the day. So I just sort of imagine myself in the scripture readings. That's one way of praying. Um, it, it, it imaginative contemplation or Ignatian contemplation. That's usually for about a half an hour or an hour. Uh, and then we have mass in our community, another form of prayer. And then at night, um, I do what's called the examination of conscience, which is a review of the day, which every Jesuit is supposed to do. And that's about 15 minutes. So those are the, the three main ways that I have of praying. When I go on retreat, it's a lot more Ignatian contemplation. It's a lot more imagining yourself in scripture. Okay. And Although you say people can pray in different ways, your book is also quite clear that you need to have intentional prayer. You just take time to pray. You can't just say, oh, well, look, I work very hard. So my prayer is my work. And I, I, I was trying to use that one, actually. <laughs> but what's your advice to someone who says, you know, I like to pray, but there's just not enough time? Well, I often ask them, uh, how important is their relationship with God? And one of the, the insights I use in the book is from uh, Father Bill Barry, who recently died, who was a great uh, spiritual writer, Jesuit spiritual writer. And he said that our relationship with God can be fruitfully compared to a relationship with another person. Obviously, it's not the same because our friends haven't you know, created the universe. Um, but the idea is that things that make for a good relationship make for good prayer. So, for example, time. You know, would you say to your, would you say to me, well, this is the most important person in my life, but I, I spend zero time with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, honesty, right? What happens when you're not honest with the person in, in, your relation, in, in, in your real life or in your walking around life, the relationship gets cold, right? And formal and distant. The same with your relationship um, with God. You know, it needs, it needs to have that sense of um, honesty as well. So time, honesty, change. I, I talk about all these things in the book. Um, but in terms of spending time with God uh, in prayer versus your work, it's wonderful to find God in your work and find God in relationships and nature. You know, we Jesuits say finding God in all things. But at some point, there has to be one on one time. Right. You know, Chris and I, you know, you and I are friends, Chris. And if, if all we did was see one another in groups and never spend any time one on one, you know, like walking around in Rome or something, what kind of a friendship would that be? Right. So. If you're not spending one-on-one -on -one time with God intentionally in prayer, you know it it doesn't it, it doesn't allow the relationship to deepen as much as 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 in any relationship. So that's that's why that one-on-one -on -one time is really important. Okay. So next question from um, Mary Catherine O'Reilly Gindhart. I hope I said that right. Um, for millennial Catholics like myself, how can we connect with our parents and grandparents in prayer? What a great question. Wow. Well, I think, um, you know, maybe by allowing them to share, I've never been asked that, to share their experiences with you, which might be different than yours, and to be open to sharing your experiences with them, right? So I'm going to make something up. They might like the rosary, you might like centering prayer. Can you talk about both of those experiences together? And can you find prayers that you agree on in common? 
the most important thing is I think is to talk about your experience. This is how I experience centering prayer or retreat uh, or nature prayer and, and allow them to talk about how they experience things. You know, I think a lot of times we denigrate other people's prayer experience. One of my favorite stories, I don't think I put this in the book. Um, a Jesuit told me that he had done a, an extensive uh, seminar, uh, extensive um, a practicum in spiritual direction. And he came back and he was talking to his mother who was in her eighties and uh, she did the rosary every day. And he said to her somewhat, he, he tells the story in himself somewhat kind of self uh, righteously. Well, let me share with you some other ways to pray. And she said, well, um, I like the rosary. And he says, well, the rosary is nice, but you know, I'm going to share with you something else. And he said, by the way, what happens when you pray the rosary? And she says, when I pray the rosary, I look at God and God looks at me. And he realized <laughs> that her prayer life was a lot more uh, developed and profound than he thought. So there's, I think part of it is giving people the benefit of the doubt where they are in their prayer life and what they like. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, Jim. Thank you to everyone for taking part. I'd now like to hand over to Liz Dodd, who is going to close the evening for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Father Jim. Uh, I got so much from that. Um, it's really given me stuff to reflect on, so I'm sure that's been the case for everyone. And to, to echo what Chris just said, I've been lucky enough to read the book as well, and it's fantastic. It's Thank like you. having um, a spiritual director on your Kindle. So you. That yeah. was my goal. Thank you. Highly recommended. Um, thank you all for coming as well. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our next webinar, which is going to be amazing. Um, it's about modern slavery. And we've got uh, Julie Etchingham, who you might recognize from the Prime Minister leader debates, uh, and Sister Imelda Poole, who is really at the forefront um, of the fight against modern slavery and human trafficking. And that is on the 25th of February, which is a Thursday, uh, same time, six to seven, and you can get tickets on the tablet website. And that's everything except to say thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Father Jim, again. Uh, thank you, Chris, and look forward to seeing you all next time.